Howdy, this is WC. I'm going to do a little demonstration on how to use a beveler and try to get and trying to get the best look from your beveler. I use uh, checkered bevelers most of the time. Uh, I like the texture that I get. Uh, this is a Bob Beard uh, beveler that I'm using at the moment. The way I hold the beveler is my pinky is my plant on my leather to hold it still. I've got my finger spread out the length of the tool with my thumb about the middle of it. The beveler is set in the cut. Lean back towards me just a little bit. If you lay it too flat, you're going to get way too much tool face and too much impression. So this is where I do. I start out tapping it, moving it along at a consistent rate keeping it straight up and down, leaned in towards me. Just work it back and forth a little bit till I make sure that I've got a clean bevel, no tool marks, reposition, move along my cut. I see I've got some spots that I have tool marks, so I go back over them, work them out a little bit, reposition my leather, You always want to have the cut line between you and your stamp. That way you can see exactly where you're going. You see how much angle you have on the tool. Just block it. Clean up any marks. back around, reposition the leather, if you feel that you skipped a little too far as you're moving the tool, make sure you go back and work over that area. The last thing you want to do is rock that tool back and forth in a pendulum. That's going to leave horrendous tool marks that you just got to keep working out. You can see the nice dark burnish that I get from the checkered beveler. If I'm leaving a project natural, then that burnish just enhances my carving work. If I'm antique staining, the antique stain has something to grab in the checkering. Antique stains will wipe out of a smooth bevel, meaning one with a beveler that has no texture to it. Keep moving your project. Now for beginners, if you have trouble keeping the beveler in the cut, then you can tap it, get yourself a ledge built, but don't drive it too deep because you leave a lot of tool marks. Now you've got that ledge come back and walk out those tool marks. And the more you do that, the quicker you will get to where you can just walk it in that cut line all by itself. You won't need to tap down and create that ledge. Once you get fairly good at using the beveler, your beveling goes along pretty fast. If 
you can see I work forwards, backwards, the direction doesn't matter. I work just a short little section at a time. Make sure I have it cleaned up before I move on. You bevel the whole thing and then think about coming back afterwards to fix the mistakes. You may forget and not come back. You may miss them. Once you bevel the whole project and you're looking at a lot of lines, sometimes it's easy to miss the little mistakes. I've beveled an entire project, come back an hour later, found that I'd missed beveling an entire line somewhere. So you can miss a line, it's real easy to miss some beveling marks. So if you work them out immediately, you'll be better off. That right there is the finished bevel.